What's going on? Welcome back to the Lacrosse Show. We're here at the Maverick Cascade offices in New York City. We're gonna be talking to Kyle Sweeney, Drew Adams. The Lacrosse Show is back, baby. Team USA. All right, we're deep into the NLL season, and we're lucky enough to be joined by Kyle Sweeney of the resurgent Philadelphia Wings. You guys are uh, putting on a show this year, kind of outstripping some people's, maybe my expectations for the team. Where's that coming from? Uh, you know, I, we're cautious with what we're, how we're <clears throat> defining our season so far. We do feel like we, uh, we've been in every, almost every game we've played, certainly till the end. Uh, we've got two one-goal losses, which you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, but a little couple things go differently in that game. Um, you know, we could be sitting at four and one instead of two and three. The direction we're getting from up top with Coach Wayne Harrison, Coach Milligan, and uh, Coach Tommy Hayek, who I played with for a long time, uh, they really are optimizing our strengths of the team uh, on a defensive end. Tommy has us <clears throat> getting out, pushing, running. Um, really just taking advantage of our athleticism, and he believes that we have an athletic advantage in almost every game we play uh, on the defensive side, so we've been taking advantage of that. And on the offensive half, which is kind of like, you know, another world to me, um, those guys are doing well, uh, you know, getting a lot of shots. The games where we take a lot of shots, we do better. Uh, you know, our shooting percentage, I'm not sure where we fall within the, um, the league from a, from a ranking standpoint, but... I do know that I think, you know, when we put up more, I think in Minnesota we put something like 60 shots. Do some quick math. If he, uh, you know, if we get 20, if we shoot 20%, we're getting 12 goals. So, yeah. um, and sometimes 12, 13 is the threshold you need to win in this league. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think I really have to give the credit to the coaches in the sense that they really put the right people on the field to, on the floor to, um, to be the most successful we can so far. This is your 10th season in the NLL. Yeah. What changes have you seen in the league? I mean, it seems like fans are really into it this year. The league is really tight. Obviously, rosters are smaller. But what kind of noticeable changes have you, have you kind of noted over this decade of play in the National Cross League? Uh, <clears throat> personally, I just believe the, the quality of play, the talent level has gotten better every single year. Uh, the guys are so big. Uh, I'm 6'2", 195. And I'm a little guy out there. That's amazing. Uh, I, I noticed my uh, my mother who comes from the games, my wife, or whoever, when all the guys come up after the game, I was like, wow, these guys are big. You can't tell when they're down on the floor, everyone looks the same size. It's similar to when, if you know, if you ever meet an NFL player or an NBA guy, um, you're like, wow, these guys are real big. So our D unit <clears throat> is just big, big boys. Um, and, you know, the league's that way. I mean, you got guys that are, you know, Kevin Crowley, 6465, you got Drew Westerfeld out there. We're playing, um, <clears throat> I always forget which Geich brother, but we're playing one of the Geich brothers this weekend at 6'3", 6'4", 2 something. The kid, uh, Gary <coughs> Duell, one of your teammates, man. He's a beast. He's huge. The kid Cliff Smith we're playing this weekend. And these guys are like big, but they can move. I mean, Gary's a big boy and he can move. So uh, that that is what I've definitely noticed. That's, this, that's the easiest thing to put your finger on and say, that, this is what I've noticed. This is where, you know, the, this is what's dramatically different from when I came to the league 10 years ago. Yeah, when you go from 6'2", 200 pounds, being kind of oversized on the bigger guys to being kind of maybe a little undersized. Yeah, well, I've never been a bigger guy, but I was like, you know, at least from a taller standpoint, I would be at least average or on the taller end. Not anymore. It's crazy. But um, it's good. It's good for the sport. <clears throat> and, you know, the, the team, everyone just handles a little bit. I would say that more professionally, but more full time than we did when I first came in. So speaking of ten years ago, you got a you got a crazy prediction: A for a college national champion, B for a tour team winner. Wow! Um, I like to keep it in Philly, so I'm going to go <laughs> with uh, the kid Jordan Wall from Duke. He's a play boy. He's, He's a, a baller. Yep. Um, goalie of the year, definitely. Sparky Cow, Austin Cow. We call him Sparky. He's a player. He's a game changer. Yeah, Sparky's the man. So um, he tried. He went to Penn State. Tried to like get rid of that nickname. He tried to. Yeah, Hi, I'm Austin. I'm like, no, no, you're Sparky. Um, so <laughs> he's a good dark horse pick. I like Austin. I don't. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think you get it. I don't. I, 
just don't see. They've never given the tour time to a defenseman. They never give it to a goalie. It's like it's like the uh, it's like the Heisman. If yeah. Penn State has a great year, though, you got to think Cow's got a chance. I mean, if they win the title, no, no when, chance. When you thought Man Taylor was going to win it last year, after all he did interceptions in games to go to the national championship, all these different things, yeah. it's a defensive. You know, this is if they didn't give it to Man Taylor last year for the Heisman and give it to Johnny Manziel, you know, I guess two years ago we're talking about two Heisman's ago, they're never going to give it to a defensive player. <laughs> so uh, not a big chance of lacrosse breaking that streak. I don't see that happening. I mean, you have to be. You know, <clears throat> I was up for tour of time during my days. I know Brody Merrill's been up for it. Um, I think Joel White was up for it. I mean, there's some good, good players that have been up for it. And it's not even, I don't think they cracked the bottom five. I, I know Brody did, but, um, so yeah, it's it's an offensive award, and I don't, I don't, I don't have any gripes about that. I think Fair that should be <laughs> So I'm gonna go with Jordan, just because I know him. Or I know who he is, I should say. Um, oh! Wait, that's actually a bad. That's a bad guess. I, I take. I retract my guess. Retract your guess. Sorry, right. Jordan. I'm going outside of Philly here. Got to go with the Thompson kid. All right, he's amazing. I was going to say you got to bring up a lot. Well, I forget. And you know, Albany is a matter of school, so we sponsor them, and so I do follow them. Um, but outside, of that, I don't know many other kids. But that kid, that kid is just amazing. He is uh, unbelievable. Six goals. Does stuff that you really don't think is going to be possible. Yeah, yeah, he's good. So. Um, I'll go with that national champion. I mean, this is totally pulling. You know what? I'm actually gonna go. I, I'm gonna go with Notre Dame. That is a big choice. They've been knocking on the door for several years. I know Coach Jerry Byrne very well. Coach Corgan. They they do things right out there, and um, <clears throat> you know you can you can only knock at the door so long before you gotta come in. Right? So I you, I don't ex I don't expect to see them go the other way and tail off, you know, not being a final four stuff like that. So um, I'm going with the Irish. Nice, those are good picks. I think Thompson is a definite front runner for the yeah. Tartan that's that's kind of that's kind of a cheap. But Notre Dame's a, a good selection, I think, uh, to to possibly win the title this year. I'm going total dark horses early on. I kind of like Wells Stanwick. I think he's going to have a breakout year as an attacking for Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Might even be going Hopkins as my national it's champion out of the tournament to, the out tournament. to title. Uh, I like their team. They're bringing back uh, some talent, and I think I think Petro's going to play them a little differently than he did last year. That's quite bold. It's a very bold move, you know. But I like your selection. It's as good. bold as it gets. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, we're here with Drew Adams, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Team USA. Long trial period, you're in the mix for the 30-man squad. What were your thoughts about going down to Florida uh, this past Sunday and, and playing? I mean, what, first of all, what's it been like to play against this group of players in practice and scrimmages? Yeah, it's been an awesome experience. Uh, you know, we've been trying out for the team for, seems like a few years now, so it's definitely been a very thorough process, which I think most of us appreciate, um, you know, because in order to get a real good understanding of who you know, should be on the team, it takes some time. So uh, we were all understanding of that and, uh, you know, I've been in 100% the whole time. And uh, it's really been an unbelievable experience. Uh, you know, either way, however it pans out for me, uh, you know, it'll be something I'll always remember. And uh, it's been awesome to be able to play with some of these guys who, you know, are the best of the best. And uh, to play at that level, even in just the practice, is, uh, is unbelievable and it's, it's been an honor. Yeah, so I mean, you know, obviously you played a really high level in college, and then you're playing for the Lizards, you know, very high level lacrosse. But I've heard guys saying that this is a, a next level kind of thing, that the, the talent, the speed, all that has just been above and beyond kind of what you've seen before. I mean, has that been true for you, standing in goal? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Anytime, you know, you move up a level, whether it be from high school to college or from college to the pro ranks, and then I guess, you know, from the pro ranks, the only thing you can really go off from there is uh, to the international level, which we were competing at. So, uh, you know, everybody out there is an unbelievable player. You know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, wanted an opportunity to try out for the team and, uh, you know, not everybody even got invited to try out. So the guys that were there and, you know, have went through this process have, uh, you know, have been committed. They've been playing really hard and, you know, everyone's been fighting for a spot on the team. And, uh, you know, when you have that kind of energy along with the skill that all these guys already possess, you know, it creates some really good lacrosse. So it's been, uh, it's been really fun to be a part of. Has there been any sort of weird moments where you're trying to mix trying out for a team and trying to show your best, but also trying to be part of a team, part of Team USA? 
know, is that hard to balance the competitive side personally versus the team aspect? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, obviously everyone wants to stick out in some way or another because they want to make the team. So you got to just find that balance where you know you're playing into a system, but at the same time you're, you're standing out for what you're doing. And you know, the coaches have said to us all along that you know they're looking for team players and they're looking for guys that can play in the system. So. You know, individual things aside are great, but they want a guy that can go and play the game that they want to play. Uh, that's been especially true on the defense. You know, Coach Petromalo has been pretty clear on you know what he expects from the goalies, what he expects from the defensemen. You know, in in terms of being part of the group that he wants to put together. So, um, you know, anytime you're competing for a spot, you want to do things that uh, you know help you stick out. But at the same time, you know, you want to be able to prove that you can be a part of the system and over you know be an overall. Uh, part of the team, which is ultimately, you know, what's gonna what's gonna take to to win. Yeah. So looking forward a little bit to the MLL season. You guys are looking to rebuild, perhaps a little bit defensively. Last year wasn't necessarily a great season for the Lizards. What have you guys been doing and, and looking at? You know, as, as camp sort of starts to approach rapidly now. Yeah, it came quick this year. Um, I, every year it comes around quicker and quicker than it has the, the year before. Um, you know, we're excited. I think uh, our coach, Lena, and our GM, and everyone that's involved in our organization always does a great job in the off season. Um, you know, I feel like they're always working to put us in the best position possible to win. Uh, I think they've done that again this year. I think we picked up some great guys, uh, not only in the draft, but through trades that should really help us. Um, you know, I think one thing that's different with uh, at least our roster on paper this year than it has been in the past is that we have a very complete team. I think we have guys that will hopefully complement each other really well. Uh, you know, we'll have some young guys on defense mixed with some guys that have been in the league for a few years now. So I think we'll have a great mix and hopefully, you know, that translates to wins uh, on the field. You do have a new goalie coming into training camp. What do you think about Devin Wells, a female lacrosse player, trying to play pro men's lacrosse. I mean, personally, I think it's pretty neat. I'd love to see her succeed, but what do you think as a guy who's been in the league, what does she need to do to, to make the team? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm excited for Devin. I think uh, I, I've watched her play for a few years, and I know she's had a ton of success, success on the women's side. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for her to, to get a shot at this and see how she can do. And, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, uh, you know, don't want to lose my spot. So, you know, we'll be competing when she, when she gets to camp. Um, you know, but at the same time, uh, I think myself, along with the rest of the guys, will welcome her and you know wish her the best as we would anybody else. Yeah, if you, if you can play, you can play, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there's I, I grew up with girls lacrosse. I had a younger sister that plays, so I know you know what it takes to be a good player, and you know I know they put in just as much hard work as we do. So um, you know if that if that hard work that she puts in leads to success in, in the men's game, then then so be it. And uh, you know I, I think she's she's obviously going to have a great opportunity, and hopefully. You know, by her getting this opportunity, it'll open the doors for maybe other girls down the road. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes, and especially just to see how those two positions translate between the men's and women's game. So I think regardless of, of making the team or not, we're going to see some really interesting stuff and yeah. probably hear some cool stories. Yeah. All right, last last portion of the interview, we're going to put you on the spot a little bit. I want a prediction for the NCAA D1 champ this year, and I want a prediction for a Tawarden winner. Do you want Sweeney's first? Uh, I'll take Sweeney's. Did he go? Did he go to Georgetown? No, no. Sweeney <laughs> went uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Which I like. He said they were knocking on the door the last couple of years. Liked them to make it this year. And uh, Twarden winner. Eventually, he got to, to Lyle Thompson. Lyle Thompson. All right. Well, I'll start. Uh, I like no, I like the Notre Dame pick, but I'll have to go with Penn State just because that's my alma mater, and I'm always rooting for the Nittany Lions. There so, we go. All right. Coach T has got those guys, uh, you know, in a good position. This is, I think, it's, it's going to be his fourth season, so I think uh, they're ready to make the jump. And uh, my guy Austin Calvin Cage, returning first team All American, you know, has been, in my opinion, the best goalie in the country for the past few years. Uh, I think he will continue to be this year. So anytime you have a guy like him in goal. You know, you have that nice uh, that backbone of the defense that I think every good team in college lacrosse needs. So uh, I'm excited to see what Penn State can do, and they would be my pick for the uh, the dark horse. I like it. Champion this year. I haven't um, been going far last year, so I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that they make good on my prediction. <laughs> I like that. Team. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then it's in terms of uh, the Twarton. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't follow as closely as I used to. Uh, I don't know, you know, as many of the guys that are playing anymore, but I know the Thompson kid is, is uh, pretty solid. 
Um, I like Jordan Wolf from Duke because he's a Philly guy, uh, Central League. So, uh, you know, outside of those two guys, you know, they would probably be my, my two picks. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got some talent in Wells Stanwick down at Hopkins. You've got Tommy Schreiber at Princeton. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a couple of guys out there who I think could get it done, but when I look at it, I mean, Thompson's going to put up gross numbers. Yeah, yeah. maybe know? maybe Joe Fletcher from Loyola, future Lizard, will, uh, will get a defensive tort. And well, we'd love to see that. I'd like to see now, that. what do you think about that? Kyle was, was pretty sold on the idea that a defensive Twarden winner is, is pretty much never going to happen. <laughs> if Penn State won the national championship, they averaged less than eight goals against a game, something like that. Cowd had a 64% save percentage. Do you think if a guy were really phenomenal, his team really did well, you know, maybe won the title, and there weren't any just offensive complete standouts, like the best player on the team is this guy, could it? Could a goalie? Could a D guy win the tournament? Could that happen? I don't see why not, especially as a goalie, because it's very easy. You know, a defenseman. You know, sometimes their job is to shut down another player, so it's sometimes hard to judge exactly how well they're doing because they might not be putting up points in the stat sheet. Yeah. Um, but as a goalie, you know, you see how many saves they make each game. So you know, if Austin goes on a run, they win a championship, and you know, he's a big reason why, which he very well could be, or any goalie for that matter. You know, there's to me, there's no reason why. He shouldn't be able to win over any goalie or any defense because you know it's supposed to be the best player in college lacrosse and there's no reason that player has to be an offensive player every year they might just get a little more publicity because of the position that they play but you know in reality a goalie or defenseman you know would be just as deserving of that award nice. i'd like to see it happen me too. For, former defenseman <laughs> myself former goaltender i think we can agree it would be great to see a, a defensive tour at some point me too yeah. me too when they deserve it exactly because they have <laughs> Drew, thanks for All coming right, on. Thanks. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah.